Tonight's presentation is about what many people consider to be one of the best tailwater fisheries in the eastern half of the United States, the Holston River in eastern Tennessee. I'm so fired up about this Mojo stuff because I've, I've really, you and I have both been wearing Mojo sportswear for a, a, a while now, and mm -hmm. and it's exciting to be affiliated, affiliated with a really great company like this of outdoor lifestyle uh, sports apparel. Here's what I like about it as a fly fisherman. I can fish all day in this in, in, in these shirts and pants, and at the end of the day, I can take them off, rinse them off in the stream, put them on, and 10 minutes later, uh, they're dry and they don't stink. Let's look at, a, at an overview of the area. I want you to have a good sense of kind of where you are and kind of where these waters are. Um, and and to, to, so you've got a better sense of, of, of the place and the opportunities that are there. This whole area is surrounded by a number of lakes, well, the one of them being uh, Boone Lake, uh, another one being the South Holston Lake, which, which feeds the, the river coming through there. That's a major piece of this. You got Watauga Lake down here at the bottom next to Elizabethton, along with another little bitty lake called Wilbur Lake, which is right right above Watauga Lake. So there, there are four of these lakes. Uh, and then the stretch of water that we're going to be talking about between the Watauga, or excuse me, between the South Holston Lake and the Boone Lake is 14.6 miles from the down here all the way down to a little a little community called Bluff City, sitting on the sitting on the river on a bluff, as you might imagine, looking down on it. But it's only a 14.6 mile stretch that we're going to dissect for you and tell you pretty much everything we know about it. There's some. Let me go back. Hold on just a minute. There's a couple of other things I'd like to mention to you about the the South Holston River. The South Holston River. Um, actually forms up in sources to the north to the to the to the to the right upper part of this screen off the screen about two miles east of a little place called sugar grove virginia and that's probably 15 or 20 miles above this lake here and just as it comes down to the lake the south holston river it joins the mid fork of this of the holston river Right, right above the Virginia line here. And the two of those are the two major contributors of water into the South Holston Reservoir. This reservoir is pretty significant in itself. It's about a 7,600 acre lake that we're talking about here on the top right of your screen, of which 1,600 acres of that is above that, that Virginia line, that red line that you see. So TVA Lake, as all of these are, and as we get down to the bottom of this lake, the South Holston River comes out and flows for 14.6 miles down to Bluff City, and it enters Boone Lake. Boone Lake is actually bigger than the South Holston Lake. And it's made up of the South Holston River, and then the Watauga River is coming in from the bottom down here out of North Carolina, and that forms Boone Lake. And then it goes on north of there up to a little town called, called Kingsport. And at Kingsport, it enters into a small lake called Fort Patrick Henry Lake. And that's a lake, I've not fished that lake, but it's right up here under Kingsport. And as it, it, as it leaves Kingsport, the north fork of the, the, the Holston River enters it and forms the, the, the Holston River formally. And then it flows south from there, goes into Cherokee Reservoir, just about halfway between Kingsport and, and Knoxville. And as it comes into Knoxville, it joins the French Broad River and between those two rivers, it forms the Tennessee River. It ceases to be this, the, the, the South Holston River at that point, or the French Broad, and it becomes the Tennessee River, flows south, and it goes into the, the Gulf of Mexico. So you have several cities along here. You got Kingsport, you got Johnson City, Elizabethton, Bluff City, and Bristol straddling the Virginia line. So that's a general overview of the area that we're going to be talking about. Uh, but the main thing we're going to focus on 
starting right now is this area right here between these two lakes because that's where all the fish are. In fact, Chris, a mile there is in these 14.6 miles between the two lakes? It, it's a lot. I don't know what the number is, but it's a lot. Try 8,500 fish per mile. Wow. Which means from start to finish, they're over a they're over a hundred and twenty five thousand fish in the river between those two the, between those two lakes. That's what makes it a really great fishery. In addition to the fact that every rock you turn over mm -hmm. is actually crawling with entomology, stoneflies, midges, scuds, everything you can imagine is on the bottom of these rocks. So there's a lot of food for these fish. They're big fish, and there's a lot of them. Chris, you want to run through the, um, we got this thing we call at a glance. Uh, it's really out of my book how I describe all of the, the different waters that, mm -hmm. that we fish. But generally, uh, this is it's, kind of how we look at the whole river. It's a five thummer. There's no doubt. It, 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 it's one of the one of the best places you can fish, full of browns, bows, uh, even carp. I know, I know there's some great carp stories that you guys have gotten into. Um, access is very easy, accessible along the way. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to show you tonight some areas that we spend quite a bit of time, uh, but easy to fish, right? As, as Sam calls it, uh, it's assisted living fishing. So <laughs> it really, it, if there's a giveaway to the assisted living portion, the gradient is, is, is not even one, a 1% one gradient from the dam to Bluff City. It's basically you're walking on flat terrain all the way down. Uh, the 14.6 miles, it only drops 137 feet over 14 and a half miles. So it makes it very, very easy. Um, so, that, you know, it's, it's a, we rate it very high. It's a great river. Um, here's how we look at the Holston River when we fish it. Now, you're not going to find this in a book. You're not going to see it in a magazine. You're not going to you're not going to have it at an outfitter where they're going to have this up on the wall because they call it something different. Uh, every one of them have some different terminology they use. But from Bluff City at Island Park, right in Bluff, there's an island right in the middle of the river there where it goes into Boone Lake is the start of what is four point four and a quarter miles that we call the lower section. And it goes up for four and a quarter miles to a bridge that crosses, very easy to see. And then you, you get into a 5.4 mile section of the midsection that goes up to another bridge. <laughs> and then we call that the upper section for the last five miles all the way up to the dam. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to start down here and we're going to work up the lower section to show you some images and fish and places on there you may want to visit and fish or stay, things like that. Uh, there's another area, another thing I'd like to show you. This area over here is called Holston Mountain. And this is a 4,200 foot mountain over here that, that's, that's got roads um, all over it. Uh, national forest type property, state forest. Uh, I'm not sure all of the property, but there's a lot. There, there, there's a lot of streams over here. Uh, there's a lot of history over here. Um, so um, let's start down at the lower section, Chris, and work our way up and kind of show them uh, what 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 how we look at the creek or the river and, mm -hmm. and fish it as we go up. There's one area I want you to pay close attention to is this little area right here. This is an area we've stayed at over the dozens of times we've been up there. We've stayed at this place more often than not, and it's called the Castaways. I know a lot of you have stayed there also. It's by no means the only place to stay, but it's a good place to stay. Chris, you want to talk about some of the features up up and down the creek here. yeah i mean i you know it's great shoals great great access point um you know down closer to, to island park it's a little bit deeper so you'd probably have to float that area now that the that the uh the, the lake and everything is full uh but uh but again on up you're getting in some great shoals shelves um excellent entomology very clear water so it is definitely very technical water um, you have to sneak up on these fish sometimes, 
but uh, with the right mix of bugs and tippet, uh, you can get into some big fish. We've caught some nice, nice browns uh, and rainbows in this area. We have Chris and I and our fishing buddies down through the years have stayed at this location of the castaways mm -hmm. quite a few times. And you literally, it's about a hundred yards from the river. Uh, you literally can walk right down to the river and I can guarantee you we've caught a thousand fish in this area right here down through the years. This image shows the water up. This is during a release or at least during um, either coming up or going down. If it were if it were during during regular flows, you would see rapids all along here. And when I say rapids, I mean ankle to knee deep rapids along this area here. Very weightable and very fishable. This lane right here is always loaded with fish all the way down to these shoals down here that start all the way down to Island Park. And so we fished, I'm going to go back here. We have fished all the way down through this curve to where it starts getting deep. And this is where sometimes, depending on the time of year, you'll look down in the bottom of some of these runs and you'll see 20 or 30 25, 30, 35 inch, what you think are trout down there. They're not trout, they're carp. And they're huge. And they lay at the bottom. Rarely will you catch one, but when you do snag one, if you are playing and wanting to, to have some fun, when you do hook one of these animals, you will think you are hooked on a log at the bottom of the river because it just sits there. And um, you're going to your backing. I, yeah, yeah, really. You, you, you ought to go to your backing and you need more than a four or five or six weight rod to horse yeah. one of these things out. Yeah. I've only seen one caught uh, and I was I was totally surprised that he, he horsed this fish up on the on the bank. But but anyway, um, the shoals are all the way down. You can fish all the way down here and just have a really great time. Uh, this is the first island above above Island Park. Um, this is very typical of what you see. You see a lot of pasture land, corn, soybeans, uh, houses right on the river. Uh, going upstream about halfway up, you know, about a mile and a half, maybe two miles. Um, you see this boat ramp right here. Uh, and I'm going to show you um, after this image. I wanted, we wanted to show you this picture to, to, it, to illustrate how beautiful this water is, because this is actually a good it's image gorgeous. of what the water really looks like. It's kind of tea covered, colored. Uh, it shows the bottom is covered with with rocks, uh, a little bit of uh, algae and, and, and growth on the rocks and just covered, every one of them uh, are covered with bugs. Now, about five to 10 minutes later from this left image, the water started coming up. And this is what it looked like standing in that same spot. So we're going to talk a little bit later about understanding the release schedules and the significance of them, because in just the course of a few minutes, it goes from this mm -hmm. to this, and it's time to lay your ears back and get out of the creek at that time, or you're going to get hurt. It's dangerous. It can, it can get dangerous. Yeah. Um, this is a typical uh, little rainbow. Yeah. Um, 12, 13 inch rainbow. 12, 13 inch rainbow is nothing in this in this river. Mm -hmm. uh, you see how fat this, this fish is, just fat as a pig. Um, I think probably caught this one on a, a probably a, about an 18 um, uh, uh, BWO mm -hmm. is what that was caught on. Uh, but this is very typical of what you look like. This is very typical of the rock structure that you'll see around with with the grass uh, along the side of the of the, of the river. Yeah, yeah, and, and and be prepared. Have you know? I don't fish scuds that much, but I know it's very popular, and and because there is so much grass. But uh, I mean, you can see this is the same area that we fish on the left side. You can see that's what it looks like some days, and on the right side, uh, it's nothing for the fog to set in and uh, and and be kind of difficult to see down there. So <laughs> you need a light on your yeah, bug. You yeah. need a light yeah. I, for for you pilots out there. I'm a pilot. I call this uh, in, instrument fishing. <laughs> uh, this is IFR fishing. Some days uh, you can hardly see the end of your of your of your rod. This is about halfway up the lower section to a place called the, the, the J Forest Thomas Access Area. This is a boat ramp. 
uh, that you can you can you can either take out here or put in here and, and go down to Island Park, or you can just park here and and and, and go in here and fish because this is very typical of the of the of the cataract or shoal structures across the Holston River all the way up. See so about 50 yards up, there's another one. 50 yards up, there's another one. And so you can fish all along here reading these shoals as the water comes over, goes into this pocket water and then straightens out in these long runs. This water here is probably about four feet deep. Um, probably no more than four feet deep, very weightable, very easy to, you know, get a bug down to the bottom there uh, because those fish hold in there uh, as, as always looking upstream, looking in the water column and, um, and, and feeding or depending on the time of day, they'll get over on the side, un, you know, against the bank under the trees. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's just a, it's, it's, it's loaded with these types of features right here. Uh, notice um, the road paralleling it all the way up. Nearly everything we're going to show you tonight has one or two roads paralleling it. So there's no problem with access. Um, here's another image. This is a, a little bit larger rainbow. This is a, probably about a 16 or 17 inch rainbow. Again, not an abnormal fish. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very common to catch, you know, anywhere from four to six of these a day on top of some slightly smaller fish and some bigger fish in the 20 to 21 or two range. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm fishing, believe it or not, this is a four weight I'm fishing here and I'm overfishing it. I need a, I should fish a bigger rod and I do fish a bigger rod now, but for years I fished this, this uh, eight foot four weight. Uh, F.E. Thomas taper, and it handled these fish really well, but it forced me to play these fish uh, because you do have some fast water. These fish are not stupid. They know how to, go, they know how to run downstream and get into uh, some fast water. Uh, what, with some of our good buddies uh, right here that, that we fish with, we have a good time. Um, well, Chris, this is the top of, of, mm. of, of, of the, 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 the lower section that comes up to a place. There's a bridge comes across. Uh, it's called Riverside Road, which is this road that runs all the way down to, to where we stay in Bluff City. And Spring Road, uh, Big Springs Road Bridge uh, is this road going here that parallels the midsection just about all the way up it. So you've got a parallel road all the way up there. And you know when you get to this bridge, because when you look over here in this island, there's a beautiful home in the yeah, middle of this island. It's gorgeous. Now yeah. I'm telling you, these people are got to be gutsy to be living below a 250 foot earthen dam um, with that much water on top of them. And they're, they go to bed every night in the middle of the river. That, that's pretty gutsy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, but anyway, um, this is the upper part, very typical of what you see. The river splits here. Uh, a little trickle goes down this side, and, and you can fish up here. Some great mm -hmm. rock structure yeah. uh, along there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Is it? Yeah, no, and I know. We're going to talk about it in a little bit of places to stay, but right at that, right at the bottom of that bridge is a place called Papa's. Right here. Yeah, right at the bottom. That you can uh, uh, that you can rent, uh, stay there. All of that water is fantastic. Right below that bridge uh, is all weightable water. Uh, and typically, anytime you go over the bridge, you're going to see a guide sitting right there yep. uh, with a customer. So, yeah, you, you'll see boats, all, guide boats all up and down the river. This river mm -hmm. is totally floatable, especially during releases. And it's floatable for the most part, even when it's not released. There are a few, few areas they have to pull over, but generally speaking, uh, this run right here, especially, is just a beautiful run. But I'll show you the shoals on that as we move up it. Now, I put this image in here, or we did, just to show you. This is uh, the end of a day, a typical day for us. We come off the river. Uh, you might see this 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 nine foot rod right here is bent about about ninety degrees, uh, pulling a fish out of that hole right there, I, and. This is us at dinner. We eat a lot, uh, cook a lot at, at our cabins, go out occasionally. Um, we do smoke cigars and we do occasionally we'll, we'll, we'll drink. Uh, 
uh, but we we have a good time and have been having a good time, and you can too. Um, well, Chris, this is section. This is the midsection here. Yeah. You you want to give a little insight on that? Well, no, I mean it, it, it again. It's up from that bridge area, so very weightable. Um, there are areas that you're going to get into that that you know you just you have to be in a drift boat. You know, it, it, there are some there are some pretty deep holes. Yep. Uh, but uh, and you end up with a lot of residential along uh, this side on the on the on the south side of it. Uh, but uh, man, th this water is gorgeous and. Like you said, you could look down and see 20 or 30 carp. Here you look down on the water and you'll see 30 or 40 trout. <laughs> Big trout. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're just schooled up uh, and uh, very, very sensitive. Right? You have to be very careful how you fish these these waters. These fish, are they're big and they're big for a reason. I mean, they, the water stays cold year round. There's a lot of bugs in there. They've seen a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people. A lot of people yeah. So they, they can get pretty cautious. Uh, but this area right here, this straightaway right here, after you, you cross the bridge and t you can turn left and, and go along this frontage road right here. And um, there are places you can park all along here. I'm going to show you. There, mm -hmm. There's some, you'll see a few no fishing signs, but most of it is open for fishing. And um, a lot of just is mostly weightable, especially when the water is not being released. Uh, and you come right up here to where the road takes a, a, a 90 degree and goes over to, to Highway 44. There's another boat launch right there about halfway through the midsection. So plenty of boat launches to put in uh, kayaks or drift boats and float down, you know, five miles at a time, two and a half miles at a time and put in, take out and move around quite well. Um, as you move up that straightaway I was just showing you, this is the frontage road. There is a release right now. This water's up. If not, you'll be able to see the shoals out here that you can walk out, wade, stand on, fish the runs all the way up here. But one thing I wanted you to notice is this turnout right here. About every 50 yards, there's one of these that you can park in and, and fish. And, and so that's important. Uh, because this this is a narrow spot right here, but this road goes all the way up, just about halfway up the midsection, uh, and, and a pretty typical of what the river looks like right there, and the width right here, about 50 yards across, right? It could get wider than that. Um, mm. Here's you know this is this is this is not during a release here, and this shows you what basically the the average depth of the water a lot of the way up and down this river uh, that you would be fishing, highly weightable. Uh, there are some holes, uh, but the water's so clear, you know, it's easy to see. Um, typical fish, uh, you see a lot of grass, a lot of grass beds on the edges and in the water, because when the water's down, sometimes the grass will grow and it, there's enough time there that grass can actually take on some of the areas in the middle of the river, which is kind of interesting. But you can see during the the, the, the releases how it combs this grass down. And, you, and it's, uh, it's actually very pretty. Um, this is about a mile and a half up the midsection right here. And the reason I'm showing you this is to show you the the, the shoals that come across here. This is not during a release. This is what it typically looks like. Nearly all the water, the deepest water you see right here is probably four feet deep against the bank over here because that's the outside of the turn. Uh, but on the inside, you've got these shoals. All of this is fishable along here. A lot of endomology, um, just a lot of opportunities to dry drop in here. Uh, and during, of course, the, 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 the summer months, because of all the, the pasture land out here, um, a lot of opportunity for terrestrials mm -hmm. along here. You got a lot of grasshoppers and all kind of stuff out here that that make mistakes and fall in the creek, and um, and so that can make for some really good fishing. A lot right of there. wildlife. You're going to see bald eagles. You're going to see deer. You're going to see you name it. Uh, you, you're going to see some beautiful, beautiful animals. You really will. I mean, we we have seen in front of where we're staying a bald eagle come down right in front of us and grab a mm -hmm. trout out of the water. Yeah, and um, and what what made us mad was we were we weren't catching anything. <laughs> this, this dang eagle comes down and grabs a fourteen inch brown trout right out in front of us and gone. Um, uh, small rainbow 
I mean, in a, in a wild stream, this would be a big fish, but you know, this is a you know a little rainbow that a little beadhead prince, which is one of my favorites. Uh, Chris laughs at me because that, that's my favorite bug. But anyway. I like princess. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the top part of the midsection here. This is the bridge at Hickory Tree Road, mm -hmm. uh, which is also the name of Highway 44 that goes all the way back down to Bluff City. So you can jump on Highway 44 in Bluff City and in literally 10 minutes be right here at the, the top of the midsection or the, 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 the beginning of the, the upper section. Mm -hmm. and, and again, the significant thing about this image is, is to illustrate the shoals. Because all the way up this river, you've got this type of structure of rocks and you can walk right out on these rocks mm -hmm. and, and fish between them, which the fish hold between them, watching the water column. They get before in the pressure wave before it, watching the water coming over it. And then they get down below it, watching the water as it comes off of it. And then it'll get in this run right here and their big pigs will get down in here and lay in the bottom. And it'll roll over, come into another run. So you just have a huge opportunity all the way, all the way down to catch fish. And so here we are at the, the upper, uh, at the end of the midsection, and we're going to get on the upper section and head upstream, Chris. Yeah, I know. Great, great area. Um, I'll tell you, you know, typically a good nymph rod system is going to get you, you know, fishing nymphs is going to get you, you want to get down fast. So have that little bit heavier bug on your, uh, your point fly and then drop. T T tungsten. Yeah, yeah, yeah and drop something again. off of that. Uh, but th those runs are going to be, uh, even on low water, going to run pretty deep and pretty fast. And so you want to get down quick. The faster you get down, the better opportunity you're going to have. You know, Chris, uh, w one of the things about this image here that I think is significant is that this is one of the few places on the South Holston River where you have public land adjoining a, a the river. Uh, this is the lake up here. This is the South, this is the South Holston Lake. Uh, just a, uh, just a finger of it. But this is, this is all wild country up here. Most of this river, the South Holston River from the dam all the way down looks like this. Yeah. It is farmland. Yeah. It's buffered by trees for the most part. But this is one of the few places you can get about a mile above it and get in this big bend area, which is what we call, I'm going to show you some images of that in a minute, get past this island um, and, and get into some really pristine, beautiful area because you're, you're flanked on one side with big, tall hills, look like mountains. Um, and on, on, on the left side, you got a pasture growing hay. You know, so you get a real contrast there and you get almost no traffic up here. You may get a boat come through occasionally, but you're not going to see any other fishermen up here. Uh, I've never seen anyone come down. The far as the fishermen will go is down to about right here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you this area of how you get down. This is great shoal fishing along here with these power lines coming across. Um, this is the area showing some, some of the fish we catch, shows you the width of the river going into that big bend right there, looking downstream, um, low water here, typical look that you get uh, when you're fishing. This is um, a 3D image that I put in here to show you this, this big bend area, about one and a half miles up from the bridge. This is the island I was talking about. You get up here, the public land, this is some beautiful area to fish right here. Uh, it's one of those areas where, you know, you know what, even if you didn't catch anything, but you will, it, you just stand there and you look and think, I'm a fortunate person to be here right now. Uh, but this goes all the way up to the bridge coming across uh, up behind the dam. I'll show you, we'll show you that in a minute uh, below the island. Uh, and all the features that are there, but this is all highly fishable water right here. Mm -hmm. This is the whole, the South Holston Lake right here, uh, with, uh, Holston, uh, mountain range is tailing off behind it here. This is the one I showed you earlier below the lake, uh, just above Elizabethton. Um, well, Chris, there's another 
Beautiful brown. Average brown trout. You know, I'd like to say, wow, that's a you know that's a big fish, and it would be for a wild stream. But you know, that's that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of typical of mm -hmm. what you're going to. And this sucker probably ate a size 18 or 20 blue wing olive or a like, sulfur or yeah. something like that. We're going to talk about that. You yeah, got to be small. We get ready to talk about what they're going to eat in a few minutes. Uh, this is looking up from that big bend area. Uh, you got the high mountains to the to the right coming off. You got the pasture area. I was talking about growing hay over here. Look at that water. Um, I mean, the water is just beautiful um, beyond words. And this is that's what I'm. You're not going to see anyone else in there fishing. Uh, and it's about 50 yards apart here. Very flat, uh, slow moving. The water spreads out. So you got pasture fishing over here with terrestrials. You got mountain terrest mountain bugs over here dropping out of the trees, and then you got the middle of the river here with some deeper runs and stuff. But this is all weightable when there's not a release. Mm. Another little rainbow. Um, Chris, you want to talk about this area here? This is uh, as you're coming across the Holston View Dam Road. Yeah. Uh, from one of the outfitters up there, yeah. uh, coming across the bridge here, kind of talk us through that. Well, look, we, we fish this area a lot, yeah. um, and, and we fish both sides. Uh, this is where the Weir Dam is uh, on, on both sides of the island. Uh, but, but from that bridge up uh, is just amazing fishing. And you can see there's a footbridge on, on, on the bottom side here. There you go. There's a footbridge that you can go over, and you can look down and see the trout. Yeah. And by the way, when you're not catching fish and you think there's no trout there, they're there. Yeah, they are. They're just not biting. So, uh, but but we spent a lot of time here, and I, I will tell you this area in particular, from the bridge up, is is extremely technical and extremely small, which we're going to get into when we talk about the bugs. Uh, but if you're if you're not a little bitty here, uh, then then you're gonna your chances of catching a fish are going to be pretty slight. But I'm going to tell you a beautiful area, especially on the on that backside yeah. uh, when the sun's going down at night and, and the fish just start rising like crazy. Uh, and uh, boy, you can you can get into some nice big browns, nice big rainbows there. You, you really can. And, and Chris, uh, I, 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 to be totally transparent here with our our our, our viewers tonight, uh, we rarely, if ever, fish this above the weir down never we never uh, all the way up to the release uh gates on either side of of uh, osceola island mm -hmm. which runs about a mile this is a long island yeah trails all over it by the way you can you can navigate all over this thing uh, but we rarely fish either side of this island above the weir dams and we're going to show you some weir dams in just a minute yeah so good question you know studs on your boots um that that that's a good we're we're corker guys um mm -hmm. and so we're we're always prepared but um i tell you i usually wear felt uh, you, you usually can just get away with the felt um uh, even down below the bridge and we talked about that the big bend area yep, yep. um you, you can get away with felt pretty much um i, I don't fish my luma tracks on the Holston. Uh, it's not like fishing the Chattahoochee down here where you take your life into your own hands uh, if you don't have a Luma tracks. Yeah. Um, and then uh, another question was access to the Big Bend area. Did you, did, could you go back a slide maybe? And we can go back a slide. And unfortunately, the only way I know to, 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 to get to that Big Bend area, this area right here, yeah. is is to hike there's a, there's a trail running all the way down that you can that you can get down there or you can go up from the dam on highway 44 and it's not far i mean yeah. it's i say it's not far it's probably you know a mile up there um, or, or two miles to the bottom of it right here but the bridge up there which we were just talking about right, right here. from that bridge down mm -hmm. it is is a great uh foot trail I've actually, I probably shouldn't say this because I probably get in trouble by TVA, but I've actually driven my truck down this, this, um, power line easement down and parked right there and walked down. Not uh, recommended. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. And I'm not saying do that. 
don't in fact i'm saying don't do that but i'm just saying i've done that but there is a trail that goes down uh, or you can wade down. I mean, it's just yeah. not that far, and it's, it's it's fishing all the way down. So you, it's you can a, find ways to walk. You can you can get down there. Bad. I mean, I, that's on the edge of the river right there. Yeah. Uh, after release, the water's kind of occluded right there. But that's basically, you know, that's kind of what you'd be walking in, mm-hmm. uh, and you can see the depth of it right there, very shallow. Just again, know your release schedule, which we'll talk about, because what you don't want to do is, yep. is you'll, you, you know, it doesn't seem like that far, but as most times when, when we're fishing, uh, we forget and we lose track and uh, and it gets hard to hear the siren that's going to go off when they are releasing. So there, just there, be aware. There are sirens on the island and at the dam that go off, but once you get way below there, you, you don't hear, you don't hear sirens. You just have to be aware of the water and you need to know and we'll, we'll talk about that and, and tell yeah. you how to get that information um john, john schwartz had it he said river bend access he said end of river bend road parking area half mile hike in with the loop trail cool so there you go so with, with, the end end of river bend road is a parking area and it's got about a half a mile hike in so okay all right well, thanks john well thanks john for that yeah. information I, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely check we're that not out. that bright we just get in the water and <laughs> hike down we, so. yeah we just we yeah. do that we do everything the hard way <laughs> um but this this area if, if you're going to see um if you're going to see traffic uh if you're going to see other anglers on the holston river this is where you're going to see most of them yeah. This is where we see most of them fishing from the weir down to um, below uh, the Holston View Dam Road is typically where we see most people in the river fishing. Yeah. Um, Especially locals. It, yeah. A lot of locals. Yeah, local. But you got you got a launch here where you put a kayak or a boat in. Yeah. Um, you and got, Ryan had that question. Ryan was saying, "Hey." He's got a new new drift boat where it's a good area right there if, yeah. you'll, if you'll point to that bridge yeah. this um, where the, on the le- on the left side where the bridge comes across there's a launch right there now there's a little bit of a drop at the bottom of it there's it's about on that a, side it's on it's on the other side where there's one oh yeah, yeah there's one over there's here one there there's one we're... here and yeah. in theory you could put one here but there's yeah. about a one foot drop off the concrete down into yeah. the water but i would probably do it right over in this area here and and ryan go back and watch a video where we were talking about the midsection and and taking the road up um where, where there was a little little uh, uh boat launch there Yep. Uh, and and that's a great area to 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 go upstream, if you will. Yep. Uh, and and you can fish some there too with your boat. But that basically, even all the way down to the lower section, you can take a boat from here all the way down to the lower section. And you can put in or take out roughly every two to two and a half miles. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. All the way down to Island Park. Yeah. Or you can go on into the Lake Boone Lake if you want to. Mm-hmm. But I, our our buddy that fishes with us with a drift boat puts in right here when he puts in up here. Yeah. So you can do it either way. But Good question. this is an interesting area. Uh, you definitely want to visit this area. Uh, you're going to fish the Holston because you've got the aeration uh, grids that go across right here. Uh, the launches. You got a footbridge going across from this parking area. That also you have you have restrooms, a lot of parking. You have the weir dams, and then you have deep water on this side going up uh, to behind the dam here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's cut. So these are some images. This is from the top of the dam looking south. This is the what this is the overflow spillway, and this is actually where they release and generate from right here, where most of the water is actually released from, except during high water times right here. So this is a high dam. This thing is 200 mm-hmm. feet or more. These are the aeration da- aeration grids, and, and this is high water. I mean, this is this, there's or, or at least there's several mm-hmm. tubes generating right here. As you're coming across the bridge, this is the start of the island over here, uh, or actually right here, and this is the river that split coming from the dam. The aerators right here, parking over here. Uh, that's looking at the dam from the dam view road uh, from from the back side. There's the surge tank uh, when they're cutting the tubes on and off for the surge. But uh, it's, it's a very impressive structure. Uh, drive to the top of it. It's worth getting up. You can drive mm-hmm. across the top of the dam. And it's, uh, it's, it's an impressive place. These are the weir dams. 
and, and these are during a, a major release because normally I've never seen this water going over them. I've, I've only seen it. These things are probably eight, maybe nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. And normally there's only a, a foot or two of water at the bottom of it. And you got these big accordion shaped structures in the river reticulated like that, which increases the surface area for water to go over it. Uh, it's what's unique about these things. They're pretty cool. Uh, but and you this fish is, up into them. You, you can walk and fish up into these things with yeah. water falling on both sides of you. So it's really kind of a, you know, for flatlanders like us, it's kind of an exotic place to hang out, you yeah. know. Um, be nice to drink a beer up in there. Yeah, right? it would be. Smoke a cigar or something yeah, like it. It's a cool place. Uh, but this is when the water's normal, this is really a, a really great place to fish right here all the way down to the aeration dam under the bridge coming on to the area and then down to the big bend area mm -hmm. so that's kind of generally what it what it looks like um chris you're the big release guy you want to talk about releases man i'll tell you what when you when you plan a trip up here you know obviously we're not talking about the Watauga tonight but uh you know the, that's that's one of your options uh but but you really have to be on your release schedules know where you are on the water um, the TVA does a pretty good job of being somewhat consistent. Uh, if they say it's going to release, they typically do. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what we do. We're, a lot of times we're chasing release schedules when we're up there. Uh, but uh, I, I do know this. You'll get a warning sign or a warning siren uh, that will go off. Uh, but, but honestly, you, you, you need to be prepared. It, when, it, when we were talking about the castaways and, and where we've stayed and behind, that water will come up so fast uh, that, that you don't have time to to react. So know your schedules, be prepared uh, because it, it the C the CSF will get will get pretty 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 fast. So it really will. Uh, depending on the number of tubes they open up, um, I think there seems like three, four, yeah. three or four of them. You know that you see in the bottom here that are generating. Yeah. Um, where we were staying, you know, almost at the bottom of the South Holston, about 14 miles down from from when they would they would publish that they're going to start releasing. It, it would always take about four hours for it to travel the 14, the surge to get down 14.6 miles. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, you know, that was pretty dependable. Um, so it, it can be dangerous if you don't pay attention to that kind of thing. They do publish it. Um, the easy way you're probably scrambling or you may be scrambling trying to write this down look don't worry about it just go google uh tva south holston river release schedule and it'll come up yeah. with the tva site and you punch it and you click holston river and, and it'll it, it, there it is yeah. and you can read it so th the thing to remember here is that the subject the schedules are subject to change and they often do trust us um this is what it looks like when it's not releasing this is what it looks like when it's releasing you can tell you can tell the difference um you'll see signs like this up and down the river um you know sirens you know flashing lights and all that stuff look you just just get the schedule and depend on the schedule and you should be reasonable yeah and safe. chad said there's a great app that the tva has and uh, that you can download that's that's correct um that that's a great one uh so thanks chad for yeah. saying that yeah I, I think one of our buddies i think mike or somebody actually uses one of those things yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, we, uh, we use it here for the tacoa uh in georgia so that's a tva as well uh, and so we we use it for there not me. I use my laptop. And then when they change it, and I don't know they change it, I go beat on the door of the damn dam <laughs> and try to find out, get answers as to when they're going to stop releasing. This is a picture of me actually beating on the door of the generating plant, trying to get someone to come out and talk, and no one ever came out. I don't understand it. Well, because they saw you. Well, they probably, <laughs> pro probably did. But anyway, uh, these guys don't have anything to do with it. It's the TVA guys, but it made me feel better to go take it out on somebody. Um, Chris, you're the bug man. Uh, Talk to these people about what they're going to catch these fish with. Yeah, I, I love bugs. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a tire. Um, I'm passionate about it. 
Uh, and uh, so we're, we're just going to cover some of our favorite bugs, yeah. right? We're, we're, this is what we fish with. Uh, Perennial we, favorites. It's what we have success with. It's like anything, bugs are about confidence. Uh, and uh, so you fish with what, what makes you confident uh, and, uh, and you'll catch fish, yeah. right? Uh, but for us, the, we're going to we're going to walk kind of show you some of these in a minute. But, you know, there, as Sam has said, there's a lot of bugs uh, and, and in his hand here. This is just from a clump uh, that, that, that uh, of moss that he pulled off the bottom and you shake it out. And uh, man, there's there's some uh, hundreds. Yeah, there, there's mayflies to, to midges to stone scuds to stoneflies to you name it that, that are that are in this water. So uh, truly an abundance of bugs and, and, and the fish, you can tell. I mean, they're, 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 they're fat. healthy. Yeah. So but, you know, the key thing here, as we said at the bottom, pay attention to the size because, you know, it, it, it gets small. Um, you, you can see here that's a that's a Blue Ridge Parkway quarter, um, and uh, and I will tell you, small, smaller, and smallest uh, is is going to do you right. Um, and so um, I, I would say, obviously, considering you know over fifty percent of a trout's diet is midges, uh, you need to have a pretty good uh, uh, offering in your box of size twenties, twenty twos, even smaller. Uh, but I'm usually, I've got a 20 or 22. Um, I will tell you um, that, that that copper, that brown and copper, the locals call it something. Uh, maybe someone can tell us what it is. I always forget. But, but when I talk to them and say, hey, what are you catching them on? They go, oh, you know, it's a, it's a lickety split or some I don't know, some name. And, I, and I'm, I'm like, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's like a brown Copper, zebra, copper, copper zebra midge. Zebra go, midge. Yeah, basically. They love zebras. Yeah, they love, they zebras, love zebras. So, but another one that's really interesting, guys, is is don't be afraid to do a size twenty purple zebra midge with a silver bead. Uh, I I've been on the water with these guys, and they're not catching fish, and I'm tearing them up. Um, there you go. It's a sweet thing midge. Yeah, sweet thanks, thing. man. I knew it was something interesting like that. <laughs> So they call it a sweet thing. It's it's basically Chad. Maybe you can agree or not agree, but that was uh, a name. That was your old girlfriend's name. It was. I, remember. I think it was. Yeah. So, but you can agree or disagree, but but it's a brown zebra midge, I think. So, uh, but anyway, um, cool cool little bugs, right? Um, another is is uh, don't be afraid to go with with kind of a white, you know, midge. Uh, a lot of times is if you turn over a rock, you're going to see a bunch of white midges. Yep. So. Definitely. Um, all this is, uh, is, is, um, uh, thread. So that's, that's simple fly, uh, 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 white thread, uh, that I use. And, uh, and I'll either do a, uh, uh, I think that's called a, I can't remember the name of these, uh, uh, miracle midge or something like that. Uh, but, but essentially these work really well on the right side of the screen over here. Uh, that's just a clear bead. Uh, clear bead zebra, zebra, and that that gets you up in the film. Um, thanks, Chad. Yeah, you're right. Is it's, that supposed to be an air sac or, or air bubble? Yeah, it can. It can mimic that, an right? Bubble, so, yeah. and depending on the weather, so if if, if you've got really sunny day, uh, a lot of times a silver bead is going to be good because that's going to mimic uh, that air sac mm. uh, that's coming off an emerger. I'll tell you the other thing to do, and, and a lot of people don't do this, is watch the birds. If all of a sudden you start seeing the birds swarming and hitting the top of the water, you'll see five, six, seven birds circling and hitting the water. You got a hatch going. Yep. yep. Uh, and and when that's happening, then then you know jump to that, jump to those uh, those midges uh, pretty quick. Um, another great midge is called a mats midge. Uh, again, size twenty. Uh, that's eight aught semperfly black thread. Also do them in red. Uh, but just have a, uh, you know, a trailing shuck there with a little single piece of crystal flash. Uh, let's see. You're right on the birds. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate you confirming that. Um, so. Uh, Any particular type of birds, Chris? I don't. You know, I'm not a bird guy. I, I, they're just birds. Chad, Chad seems to know a lot. He may <laughs> tell us. Uh, but but they're they're little bitty like uh, kind of finchy type type birds. Oh, okay, yeah. and, and and they're small and and man they just start circling like crazy and uh, you know and, and 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 when that happens you got to hatch you better be paying attention and as fast as you see those birds 
it's going to be just as fast that they turn off. Uh, yeah. So you got to be prepared to gear up really quick. Well, it's just like saltwater fishing. When yeah. you're fishing in bays and you see gull circling and diving in, you know, they're 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 taking the bait fish. Like what Chad said, he goes, yeah, they're just birds going nuts. Pretty much. They are. They're happy. They're eating. Um, here's the other thing. Uh, if you go to South Holston Fly Shop, great guys in there. Uh, you know, Matt Champion and, 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 and those guys, super people. Uh, they're big on going 7X. I struggle with that. Uh, you know, I'm a decent fisherman, but, uh, 7X, yeah. uh, you know, we, we fish that on the Davidson when we go, uh, because it, it, it is very uh, technical. Uh, but to make myself feel better, I usually go with six and a half X trout hunter. Uh, and, uh, and that makes me feel a little bit better about, and just in case I get into, into a nice fish. Yep. It yeah. gives you just a little bit more confidence. It, it does. It does for me anyway. Uh, and then, and then, you know, like I said here, I get pretty lazy uh, and I don't feel like changing it. So most of the time <laughs> I just got six X on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I'm still I, catching fish. I, I, agree, I agree. I rarely break a fish off. I, I may miss them. Yeah. I may stick them. I rarely break them off. Yeah. Six X. Hey, you got, if you drag set right, and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the beauty of fishing bamboo, guys. Uh, it's got a, it's got a little more relief on that tippet when you fish bamboo. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, and that's why we like bamboo for that's one of the many reasons why we like bamboo but it does give you a little bit of extra tippet protection they look good too they're pretty they're cool really yeah they're pretty cool soft tackles uh this is the this stinger soft tackle on the right the orange and the lime green is a pattern i came up with uh, a couple years ago and uh man i'm gonna tell you it, it fishes really well this thing should be outlawed it should be outlawed. It is can't fish like crazy. It's crack. It's crack for trout. <laughs> um, but but um, the nice thing about these fish them from uh, kind of a size ten. So if I remember, I said you want to get down fast. I might have a size ten or twelve on. Uh, there's lead under wow. the dubbing. Wow. Um, and I'm going to get down fast, and then I'm going to have probably that midge or a BWO, mm. or I'm going to show you a split case. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that works really well. Mm -hmm. And of course that pheasant tail, Samon, uh, CDC soft tackle over here on the left. Uh, that is Samon camouflage, uh, camouflage, uh, thread that I use as the body. Uh, and of course, pheasant tail tail, uh, but that olive and red and copper does really well. Depending if the water's a little, a little, uh, mucky, I may, I may put on a gold bead. So don't be afraid to switch your beads up. Uh, here's a couple fish on the Holston right here. Uh, this was that upper section of the island that, that we showed you. Uh, that was this last spring. So look at, look at that pretty. Yeah, rainbow. beautiful that fish. Beautiful color. Right? Yeah, beautiful fish, and uh, that was right out in front of where we were staying. Yeah, yeah, really, right. really nice yeah. fish. Caught those on the stingers. Yeah, uh, so there you go. Um, here's another one. When we talk about that weird dam area, uh, great bug to have. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, that acts as an emerger, very simple to tie, uh, is, is a size 20, uh, hairs your soft tackle. And, and I tie these on a dry hook. Um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit wider gap, uh, allows for a little bit. So those uh, weighted? No, no weight at all. Uh, and, uh, just, just some hairs ear dubbing and, and, uh, and, and, a, and a soft tackle on it. And, uh, and I'm telling you those, those perform really well. Uh, split case. Uh, I got to tell you, this is this is probably become my my most favorite bug to fish. Uh, in fact, I just published a video yesterday, I think, on how to tie this. Uh, if you video. go to Wild Bearings, great, great video, by the way. Yeah, real simple. You can tie these fast, two to three minutes or less, uh, and um, you know, really, really cool, cool bug. Uh, you, anytime you see sulfurs. Right. You start seeing little yellow. We call them mayflies in Texas. Y'all call them sulfurs. But, um, you know, you see those little yellow bugs popping around uh, those sulfurs. And you, and you will see some crazy sulfur hatches on the, especially the lower Holston. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, in this, this past spring and the, okay. even this summer was interesting. They were big. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm saying size 12s they, and 14s. They look like UH-1 helicopters. Yeah, they, they were some big, healthy bugs, uh, which is good to see. Um, uh, this is that area behind castaways where we, we you know, these shoals uh, that, that we were showing. And, and there's just so many fish that just hang off these shoals. Here's a nice brown that I caught on this Mac Daddy. Uh, this is a big T uh, pattern. Uh, this is about the only caddis that I fish. 
Uh, one is you can uh, you can put some real heavy bugs off of it. It does not sink. Um, two, it's very easy to see uh, in the riffles. Uh, and uh, the downside is, is it's CDC, so you got to use uh, Loon Loxa. Uh, and frog spanning, and you got to treat it up a lot. I've never seen anything float like you. You you could tie a darn monkey wrench under yeah. that thing, and it would not sink it. And I'm telling you, you catch a lot of yeah. fish off yeah. of these. Yeah. And listen, when I when 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 I see fish come up, I've had them come up and take an airlock or the new Oros indicator, the pink. Um, I actually tie these in pink and white as well, uh, and and they perform really well. So there you go. Uh, and of course, Frenchies, we're, we're you know big Frenchie guys. Um, again, here uh, you got the coke tail. Uh, typically, got a size 16 on. Uh, typically, fishing a, a jig hook, um, and uh, that is Simon camo uh, thread uh, that I'm using for the body there. And you can see I do a hot spot on the tail, and I do a hot spot up on the collar. Um, excuse me. And um, this silver, this silver one, usually I fish in the in the winter time. Uh, for some reason, that silver and purple performs really well. Good looking bug. Yeah. And again, another one of my absolute favorites. I have no idea why this picture is upside down because it wasn't that way before. But uh, you can see here this BWO, again, size 20, an absolute yeah. dominating bug. If you, if you go in the Wataga uh, and, and you see folks catching fish, it's usually going to be on a nymph hook, not a jig hook. Uh, but I, I just like fishing jig hooks. Uh, but, but this BWO is going to catch a lot of fish. Um, depending again on your, on your water color, if it's stained, you're going to want to use a gold bead. Um, so always have gold, silver, and copper. If, if silver's not working, switch to gold. If that's not working, switch to copper. But I guarantee you this bug will catch a lot of fish. BWO is, is an absolute necessity on the whole. Spot. Yeah. And of course, you got to have, you know, again, sulfurs, right? So uh, I, I love a, a, an Adams uh, sulfur. That's one of my favorite bugs to fish. And of course, a Mac Daddy is, is just, there's nothing like it. Uh, and then black. So you better have a, a staple of black. Um, up by those weird dams, that size 20 F fly. Here in the middle, this is an old, old pattern, 50, 60 years old. Uh, performs very well when the sun's coming down uh, and, and dusk is starting to settle in. Um, that that uh, polywing midge is a fantastic brown trout bug. You're not going to catch a lot of rainbows on this. Is that the one? You, you fish the Davidson with that? Too. I fish the Davidson. I yeah. fish the Davidson, uh, Bradley they, they Fork. Eat that, eat that thing up. Yeah, anything on the Blue Ridge Parkway with that sucker. Yeah. Uh, brook trout and yeah. brown trout eat yep. it up. And, of course, Sam's favorite, which is elk hair caddis. Thank you. Yeah, I know you love them. I love them. Uh, this is a tough bug to tie, but but this is a little BWO. I usually tie it not poly wing like this with a poly material. I usually tie it with a a, a Dunn uh, CDC tuft or puff um, as the wing, uh, and and that that performs really well. Uh, but again, size twenty. So you get the theme here on bugs. <laughs> I usually fish pretty small stuff. Uh, and 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 Sam can tell you can be pretty successful at, at catching fish. Catch a lot of fish. So, um, you know the rods we we're fishing for us. You saw in the one picture I had my graphite rod, uh, but um, you know listen most of the time eight eight to nine foot five weight uh, you're going to want to have on on the Holston. Uh, it, it's just it's just good to have. And of course a ten or eleven foot three weight nymph uh, rod uh, for those those runs that we were talking about. Is a great choice. Yep, definitely. Yeah, um, local outfitters. Uh, we we like the South Holston uh, River Fly Shop. Uh, we 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 you know Matt Champions probably you know one of the he's second generation. He owns it uh, and uh, is one of the best guides on the water. Always had great success and a great time going out with Matt. Uh, you got Eastern uh, Fly Outfitters as well. Um, they have a great fly tying selection. Uh, in there, and so uh, those are just a couple of the local outfitters that that, that you know we've enjoyed getting to know over the years. Um, places to stay. Um, we talked about Castaways, so they got a website that you can go to. Uh, you can just Google Holston Castaways, 
uh, nice place to stay. Um, uh, South Holston River cabins. We talked about Pawpaws sitting at the bottom of the bridge yep. on the Holston. Yep. I mean, it's right on the water. Uh, great place to stay. Uh, and then, of course, the South Holston River Lodge. Uh, that that's that's a little out of our league <clears> sometimes. <throat> they're 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 high end, but man, they do it right. They got those great, are those are wine drinkers. Those are wine drinkers. Wine drinkers. And and man, they got they got good chefs, <laughs> and uh, they know how to do it right. There's some great campgrounds in the in the area, Cherokee Trails Campground, and there's yeah. some others too. There, another way. There, there's no shortage of places to stay. If you want to stay in a in a in a Hampton Inn or something yeah. like that, you go right, you know, several miles away, and you're in a Hampton Inn or anything, yeah. something like that. Um, or, um, you know, you, you can say, you know, well, I'm not going to take Sam and Chris's word for it. I'm just going to I'm going to Google South Holston River, pull up the map drill down to the river level and it'll highlight all the all the places that 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 are that are places to stay yeah um so a lot of these are you know are your know, bed breakfast type places or just mm -hmm. rental one night kind of thing so there's no shortage of places to stay along there and as a general rule they're, they're all pretty reasonable yeah yeah they're very reasonable um listen places to eat um if you're staying in the bluff city area is about it <laughs> yeah it is and now they're you know because of cutbacks they're not open on certain days but uh one of the best places to get breakfast yeah. uh and uh and and chicken fried steak so they yeah. do a great job uh we are big barbecue guys uh and so ridgewood is amazing barbecue it is more food you could feed four grown men at ridgewood barbecue the, 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 we've never seen the, never seen anything like it. We've never seen barbecue sand the standard barbecue sandwich. None of us can eat the whole sandwich. No, it's amazing. I've never seen anything like that. Good food, really enjoy it. And of course, over the years, we've gotten to know Big Dan at Big Dan's Big Barbecue. Dan. He's uh, he's moved off the Watauga River uh, into a downtown, and he's right next to our favorite tap house because that's well, the only one we found well it, it, yeah it, it is they got a nice outdoor area you can sit outside they got great beer selection you know we've we've determined down through the years that for a, a fishery to be a quality fishery that you know you've got to you got to have good fish obviously you got to have good access you got to have a decent place to stay uh, you got to have a place to buy cigars and you got to have a place to drink yep and and that's places to eat and and this place has it all that's about it so so anyway let's transition to uh some different you know kind of plan b's well you know when they're doing releases and you're not going to float um you're you're going to need to find some other place to fish generally because yep. uh, the fishing on the south holston river uh, below the dam, all the way down to, to Island Park, it can be very difficult, very dangerous. And so what we've done over the years, we have found other mountain streams um, or other waters close by that we can go to. One of them being the Watauga River down at Elizabethton coming out of, the, uh, out of Wilbur Dam. Um, the tailwater coming out of Wilbur Dam, cold year round a great trout fishery mm -hmm. all the way down to Elizabeth in Tennessee. And this is just, uh, what, 10 miles south on Highway 19 East or 19 South mm -hmm. out of uh, Bluff City. Uh, this is a great fishery. And I, I would have to say every bit as good as the South Holston yeah. uh, and will be a, 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 a web cast of its own at some point in the future because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's one of my favorite places to fish. So when they're releasing on the South Holston, you can jump down on the Watauga normally and, and, and continue to fish and catch a lot of fish. Uh, the Doe River uh, is, it flows north uh, along Highway 19 East out of, out of, um, up into Elizabethton, uh, along Highway 19 East. It's a great, it's a good, a fun river to fish, especially when you get in, in the wild part of it going through the gorge. I mean, it gets to be some pretty serious, uh, water going through there and it's, it's wild fish in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you can always jump on that river. That's a fun place. Uh, then you got Beaver Dam Creek, uh, which at and above Backbone Rock, which is a state park on Highway 133, 
below, it's in Tennessee, but it's just under the line from Damascus, Virginia. And it's about a 40 minute drive from where we used to stay at the castaways. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a fun place to fish. Lot, you, you can grand slam there um, in just about every time you go. If wild that's slam. What, wild slam. Wow, that's where I got my first wild that's slam. That's where I took Chris and he slammed the first time and I knew he would. Yeah. Uh, but you got beaver, you, you, you got backbone rock which is one of the most unusual places I think I've ever seen. And I believe has this in America. It's about 10 feet long, uh, but goes through this backbone rock, but it's a great place to fish. Uh, Dennis Cove Recreation Area, which is southeast of Hampton, Tennessee, just below Elizabethton, there's a Laurel Fork Creek there. Now that's not to be confused with the same Laurel Fork Creek that runs through Damascus, Virginia, just just a few a little ways away. This is a really great wild stream that I have I caught probably the most beautiful rainbow trout I've ever caught the first time I went mm -hmm. there about five years ago. Yeah. Um, I've never seen a rainbow trout as colored and as dark blood red as that fish was. But that's a good place to go. Just be prepared up there. A lot of snakes. So Snakes got watch, watch the time of year. You got copperheads up there, yeah. uh, so be careful. Uh, the other thing I'd mention is that, you know, south of the, the South Holston River is a mountain range called the Holston Mountains, about 4,200 feet. Uh, the north face and south face of that, of that, that range has a lot of water on it. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to get in trouble for hot spotting somebody's <laughs> other stream. So anyway, um, when they're releasing and you can't fish on the South Holston, there are other places to go. Um, here's how to get there. Um, as you see in the middle of the, of the image here, here's the South Holston flowing out of the, the, the Holston Reservoir down to the uh, this blue line here. You got Interstate 81 coming down from the northeast, just blistering right past Bristol, right between Kingsport and Johnson City keeps going. That provides really great access from the northeast and southwest. And then uh, you've got Interstate 26 coming up from Asheville through Johnson City, crosses 81 up through Kingsport, keeps going, which gives you kind of good north-south. Then you got Highway 19 East, coming out of North Carolina, um, out of uh, Boone and uh, Banner Elk and all that area. And then you've got uh, 421 coming out of Boone also that runs up to Bristol. Um, you, you, getting here is not a problem. Uh, any of these, you just jump right off, come to Johnson City, hit, hit uh, what is it, 19 West, East, whatever, and you're there. And um, uh, the, the police are very friendly. <laughs> they they will stop you just to say hello? Yep. No, they will not stop you to say hello. They will stop you to give you a ticket. So we're giving you an advanced warning. If it says do 45, do 45. Do 45 or you will contribute to the retirement system there. A lot of people pay a lot of money up there. They really do. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a few minutes here. We'd, if, we would love, if you got any additional questions or comments or anything, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, or we'll put it in the in the YouTube. So we're, we'll take this video. It'll be a couple of days. We'll get it posted on YouTube so you can go back and, and go back through this at your leisure. But uh, thanks, John, for, for sending that link. And we'll grab that for sure. Um, any other questions? Uh, how much does a release fish? You know, it, <laughs> it depends. That's a great question because I, I tell you in general, um, I like, there's usually going to be activity on the front end of the release, but I really like the fish on the back end of the release. As the water is coming down, um, I, I really like to fish it. Um, now, if you're, if you're in a drift boat, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it, you're, you're, you're going to be uh, doing pretty good uh, anyway, but uh, I, I like to catch uh, I like to catch the back end of, a, of the water coming down. Uh, there's obviously a lot of great bug activity, and um, so there you go. Yeah, my, my, my answer to that is uh, when they're releasing, I head down to one of those Plan B waters that I just yeah. showed you, 
and some of my buddies float. And when we get back to the house and start comparing notes, they caught as many or more fish than I did. Yeah. A, a lot bigger fish in many cases. So yeah. the release really doesn't affect the fish is feeding, at least to the point of affecting it to where they don't, you know, you you don't catch them. They're used to it. They're used to it. They, yeah. The water goes up and down every day to them. It doesn't yeah. really affect them. I've, I've drifted uh, the waters on release and, and caught just as many as is not, you know, on, on, on the water release. Um, you know, Ryan, as far as a minimum flow uh, to target for a drift boat, um, we, we are not big drift boat guys. Yeah. No, don't have anything against it. Um, we're, in fact, usually because we're really focused on Blue Ridge Parkway, we're usually bushwhacking somewhere, yeah, really. uh, to be honest with you. And, and this is a treat to kind of come to the Holston, the Watauga in that area. And we do we do this two to three times a year. Yeah. And even then, we, we usually go off into the dough and think yeah. that we're superheroes and end up with, you know, busted legs. I, I, I got to tell you, yeah. and, and I know Chris feels the same way, catching fish on the South Holston River is such a sure thing. Sometimes after two or three days of that, I lose interest. Yeah, I want to go fish I, something else. I want to go chase a six-inch brook trout or, yeah. or something that's never seen a human before yeah. that I have to sneak up on and, and really trick him into to biting something that he thinks is something he's supposed to be eating. So, Ryan, I, I would I would check the fly shop. Uh, yep. they're, they're, you know, for us, that's where we have the most connection to. It doesn't mean that we're, we don't support or not involved with other fly shops it's just usually if we go up there and do a float trip when we do them um, i you know we call for matt uh champion um he, he's that good there's uh, there's some great guides up there but i we just don't know that's a good question uh best airport to fly into sam uh, be, it'd be the tri-city airport if you're flying if you're depending on what you're flying uh if you're flying commercial it'd be the the tri-city airport uh, kingsport bristol johnson city mm. But there are several other private aviation smaller airports that you can get a, you know, a 172 or even a citation in uh, if, if, if you need to. So yeah. uh, there, there's, there's about three or four airports uh, in the area. The only thing I would say, if you are a private pilot, I, and I am, be very careful of that Holston Mountain. Uh, it's 4,200 feet. It typically, because of the, the, the weather patterns around there, you'll get a lot of, of, of fog and weather. In fact, in 1976, an L-4 Phantom with two Luftwaffe German pilots that were over here bored into the side of that mountain at about 600 knots. So if you're flying up here, in its IFR condition, make sure you've got your your, your barometer set right, and you and you're flying a, a flight plan. Um, yeah, great, great. Okay, Chad has some great intel for us guys. Uh, by the way, you can go to the South Holston Fly Shop and get that map uh, that that, um, that that we were talking about a minute ago. But Chad has something that's very interesting. We'll have to try out on this trip coming up. He said there's a new fly shop uh, called the Fly Box. Uh, it's got beer taps. We're in. <laughs> Sign us up. Uh, and uh, so all the fly shops in there are amazing. I agree with you, man. They're, they're, they're great. He said the fly box uh, is awesome fly shop right near the weirs. Yeah. So we'll have, okay. to, we'll have to check that out. Um, the only bug you didn't mention is, is a puff daddy. Yeah, you know, I think that is a lot like the Mac daddy, uh, to, to be honest with you. Um, but, um, you know, I, I know Puff Daddy's pretty big up there. Um, I just, have, you know, have gotten to where I fish that Mac Daddy, uh, and, and I just don't veer from that too much. I, yeah. You know, it's my confidence bug, and, and I can drop a size 10, almost a size 10, 12, off of that Mac Daddy, and it'll still float. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> really. So, anyway. But, yeah. Also, um, you know, a bug we didn't really talk about were scuds. Yeah, a lot and of I, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, yeah. there's a difference between a green scud and a tan scud with these fish. Yeah. I didn't think there would be, but by golly, there is. I was fishing scuds. I was dropping a scud. It was a tan scud. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd caught fish on it before, and I wasn't catching anything. A drift boat came by with an outfitter in there and, he, he, you know, jawing back and forth. And... And he found out what I was fishing. He said, well, here, try this 
green scud. And it was it looked exactly like the one I was fishing, yeah. except it was just a shade greener. First cast, bang. Second cast, bang. It's amazing how discerning these fish can be. Yeah, another another point here that, that, that was brought up, and, and I have not heard this, uh, maybe somebody else has, but felt boots, uh, felt bottoms are going to be banned in Tennessee, West Virginia, and Virginia uh, at some point um, is, is what someone has said here. I haven't heard that, uh, but, but definitely something to check into. Um, that being the case, uh, I would be, my workers will have their little aluminum disc on the bottom of yeah, them. Yeah, they work every time. Yeah, we just switch over to the Alumatrax uh, and uh, and do pretty well. Um, John John mentioned uh, there's two section that, sections that close for the brown trout spawn. So yeah, when 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 that starts to happen, uh, you know, rule of thumb, guys, stay away from the browns. Uh, they they close a couple sections, but uh, anytime that's happening, doesn't matter what watershed you're on, right, right. Um, you know, stay away. Uh, let let them do their thing, reproduce, uh, and let the rainbows eat their eggs. So, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, good egg pattern. You better have some egg patterns yeah, for sure. Yeah. So good, good, good down, good. Downstream, downstream, downstream. Uh, what are Aluma tracks? Um, if you go to Corkers, uh, Corkers uh, wading boots, uh, they they have uh, what's called Aluma tracks, so you can pop off your your uh, felt bottoms, you can put on a rubber sole. Uh, and when you buy a pair of corkers, they typically come with a rubber, rubber sole and a felt sole. Uh, you got to pay another 70, 65, 70 bucks uh, to get the uh, uh, Aluma tracks. Uh, my recommendation, both, I have the bars uh, and then I also have the hex discs. Right. Um, I have found that the hex discs are going to be safer. De uh, de definitely, because when you get up on top of a rock, uh, those lunars don't give you quite the traction, and um, yeah, you'll find yourself at the bottom of the river. Yeah, if you'll if you've not fished corkers, you'll you'll love them. Uh, nothing like a Habana Monte Cristo number two at the a end of the day. Absolutely. And Thank speaking you, Kevin. Of, speaking of that, I've, there's a couple in the humidor. Yes, over there. there are. So, uh, Kevin, Kevin, you need Kevin, you need to hunt us up when we're up there, and uh, yeah. we'll, we'll smoke and drink together. Man, I love it. So, hey guys, we're, uh, any, we any other questions here? Uh, let's see. Once you mentioned Ridgewood, I knew you guys were on. It. <laughs> hey guys, we we appreciate it very much. Uh, and uh, you know, if you want to check out more about us, uh, go to wildbearings.com. Uh, that's where we have all of our fly rods, uh, all the different selections there, uh, bugs. We are going to start carrying bugs. Uh, we, we've got uh, a lot more bugs. A lot more bugs we're going to be carrying. Yeah. We, we typically carry cigars. We're probably going to put a cig our cigar line back in, yeah. uh, but we'll, we'll see. We're still studying the feasibility yeah. of redoing that. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we, we've, we've enjoyed being with you. Uh, check out our site for the future uh, webcast that we'll be we'll be doing. Subscribe and uh, and you'll get notifications when we have new videos pop up. Check out our YouTube channel Wild Bearings, yeah. um, and um, we hope we see you on a river stream sometime. All right. Thanks a lot.